Boy, I tell y'all what, church, the devil does not want revelation knowledge going out into the world. I have made this video today five times, and that devil has done everything to try to stop this video. He doesn't like it whenever uh, the Holy Spirit of God goes out into the world and reveals him to the world because he likes to sneak up on everybody. Well, I tell you what, he's not going to stop me because the power of God is for me and not against me. And I'm going to make this video if i got to make it a thousand times because I am determined. Now, here we go, church. And like I said, I'd like to see that devil stop this video because I'll keep making this video. I will, I promise you. I'll make it a hundred times today if I have to in the name of Jesus. I bomb that devil away from here in Jesus Christ's most holy name. I take authority over you, you unclean spirit, trying to come against the word of God. Here we go, church. I'm going to be revealing this thing that is coming in the seat that he's going to be sitting in. That's why the devil's getting up panicky. In the book of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 5, and in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 24, we see that the Assyrian is getting, given a rod, and this rod is to rule all nations. We see in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 27 that Jesus is also given a rod to rule. Now, if the beast is given a rod and Jesus has a rod to rule all nations, they have to have the seat of power that they're going to rule from. We all know that Jesus will rule and reign from the seat in the throne of David. So here we go. In the book of Revelation chapter 9 and 11, we see that the Assyrian is in the bottomless pit. The beast is in hell. We see in Revelation 17 and 8 that the beast is coming up out of the bottomless pit. Ezekiel chapter 32 and verse 22 and verse 23 establishes the word with us that the Assyrian is in hell. Now the Assyrian is not from this earth, church. He is a fallen being from the Garden of Eden. He was once in the garden and he fell. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 7 and 8, the Assyrian is going into the land of Emmanuel. Well, the land of Emmanuel is the city of David. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 says Jesus is the governor of the throne of David. He will sit on the throne of David. Read Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. Also Micah chapter 5 and verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 2 says that this Assyrian is saying that he is God and he is sitting in the seat of God. We see in Ezekiel 28 and verse 9 he is only a man. We see in Ezekiel 12 that he, Ezekiel 28 and 12, that he is a priest. We see in verse 13 that he was in the Garden of Eden. We see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3 that he is the man of sin and also read verse 9. In Ezekiel 31 and 8, we see that he was in the garden of God. So he is not an ordinary man that just got born upon this earth. He was once in the garden of Eden. Now, Revelations 11 and 2 says the holy city is given unto the Gentiles. Stay with me, church. This is an amazing word from the Holy Spirit of God. In the book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 2, they see the star of David, which is the star of Judah. Uh, we see that uh, it is in the east, and it is announcing the birth and the coming of Jesus Christ. We see it now. The devil is going to try to deceive the world by lining up and trying to establish this in the word that he's going to have a star too. There's going to be that star shining in that sky, church, I promise you. Revelations 8 and 10 says, There fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. Isaiah chapter 62 and 1 says that that lamp is salvation. It says salvation as a lamp that burneth. Now in the book of Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6, it says to restore Israel. I will also give thee a lot to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation. That is why the star, the fallen star is coming as he is a burning lamp. That he is salvation to the Gentiles. You just saw in Revelations 11 that the holy city is given to the Gentiles. Now in the book of Acts chapter 15 and verse 14, Simon has declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. We saw in Revelations 11 and 2, the city is given to the Gentiles. We saw in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6 that, this, uh, that it is a lot to the Gentiles 
You just saw in Revelations 8 that star that's falling is coming as he is a lamp burning, as he is salvation. We see in Revelations 13, 16, and 17 that he puts his name and his mark upon the forehead of his people. You see, he's trying to establish that word, isn't he? For himself. He's coming before Christ did to try to deceive the world that he is fulfilling all this word. Acts 15 and 15 says, To this agree, the word of the prophets as it is written. This is what he's going to do, church, right here. After this I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Also read the book of Amos chapter 9 and verse 11 to establish that word. In the book of Acts chapter 15 and verse 17. That the residue of my, that might seek the Lord. Listen to it church. And all the Gentiles of whom my name is called. That is why the beast is putting his name upon the Gentiles forehead. Because he knows that when Christ returns, Christ will do exactly the same thing. The devil is just trying to get a jump ahead of Jesus Christ. He will return to the earth to deceive the world that this is the end of the tribulation, that this is the wrath of the devil, uh, that he's putting his name upon the forehead of the uh, people. Uh, we see that he will, did you see what he said? They're going to rebuild and restore those ruins. Church, they are going to dig up things of David and restore the things of David as it was in the days of, da of David. Because that is the seat where the beast will sit. He will sit in the tabernacle of David and in the ruins and the palaces of David. He's going to restore them to new. Because that's where the beast is going to sit. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 45. He shall plant the tabernacle of his palaces between the sea and the glorious holy mountain. But he will come to his end and none will help him. He wants the throne of David. Second Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 2 says the city of David is Zion. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7. That is also the seat of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. Bethlehem is in Judah. And the reason why it is in Judah. Because Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And it is a priestly tribe. Genesis 49 and verse 9. Uh, the, in verse 10, a scepter shall not depart from Judah. You see, the scepter is the rod. It is the rod that rules all nations. It is the seat of power. It is the place where the beast will sit. It ain't no accident they're finding all these palaces and ruins of David. And they're restoring them because that's where the beast will sit. Revelations 5 and 5 tells us that Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. We see in the book of Revelations chapter 17 and verse 4, the woman is covered in purple and scarlet. That ain't no accident. Exodus chapter 26 and verse 31, those are the colors of the veil of the temple. Revelations chapter 17 and verse 3 and 7, we see the beast is carrying the woman. Only the priest can carry the sanctuary church. We see that in the book of Numbers chapter 7 and verse 9. Here we go. The good stuff. We're establishing this word and that devil don't like that church. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 13. We see that the Assyrian, the one that's going to say he is God, that's going to sit in the city of David and trying to restore the palaces of David, he also is a priest. That's how come he's able to carry the sanctuary because he is a priest. Uh, Ezekiel sees him with ten stones in his breastplate, the breastplate of a high priest, because he is given ten kingdoms, Revelation 17 and 12. Here we go, church. In the book of Revelations 11 and 8, we see the two witnesses that are in Jerusalem. We know it is in Jerusalem because John is making it clear it was where the Lord was crucified, and the Lord was crucified in Jerusalem. Revelations chapter 13 and verse 2, we see that the beast is a lion, trying to deceive the world that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. We see that in verse 11, he comes up like a lamb with two horns, trying to deceive the world that he has prevailed. That whenever he died, he was rose again as the lamb of God. You see, that devil is, is going to line up. He's coming with all kinds of deception. Jesus said if it was possible, he'd fool the very elect. 
We see that in the book of Lamentations, chapter 1 and verse 15, it is Judah that is the wine pressed. Psalms 114 and verse 2 says Judah was his sanctuary. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6, Bethlehem is in the land of Judah. Judah was the sanctuary. Revelations 11 and 2, 11 and 1, we see the temple. Church, the beast is going to sit in the city of David, on the throne of David. And we see that in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 2, the city of David is Zion. So the beast that is coming is coming as a star of David. A lot of the Gentiles, their salvation. He'll build again the tabernacles of David and the ruins that are falling down. He'll restore them because that is the seat that the beast will be sitting upon. Amen, church. That's the word of God from the Holy Spirit of God. That's revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God. So now we know why they're finding all these things about David. Because the devil will restore all those things. He will move the people to do it. Because that's where the beast is going to sit. In the seat of David. And showing himself to be a light of the Gentiles. God bless you my dear precious friends.